hard to remember and keep track of them. But here we are, Monday morning, at the C note. And nothing's changed in regards to the C note. Everything, everything has changed in regards to the county and what's going on. Yes, litigation has been filed. Paul picked up his paperwork Saturday and I happened to get a copy of it shortly thereafter. So I've been able to see what's going on and there's two different things that have been filed against them, two summonses. And get this, they're filed by the Hennepin County Attorney Mike Freeman himself, the ultimate bigwig in Hennepin County when it comes to prosecuting, prosecuting crimes. But this is not a crime. These are both civil filings by the Hennepin County prosecutor. And case number, by the way, this is all public record. Anybody can look this up if they want to. You just got to go online. Case number 27-CV-22-1089. Type that in on the Hennepin County website or state of Minnesota site. And you'll be able to find the uh, case. And, and I'm not sure what you can get downloaded at this point. But there is stuff there to get. So like I said, Mike Freeman, Hennepin County attorneys filed two summons or two claims against Paul Burquist, uh, Superior Dreams LLC, and Ben Wilson. Uh, I guess they're the owners of the boat, or known owners, or, or whatever. And these two, one is for an injunction to prevent them from storing the boat here. Okay, that's the first one. The second one, not an injunction, but it's a civil public nuisance claim, claiming that this boat is creating a public nuisance it's preventing people to use the ramp and landing and things like that. Now I've had a chance to go through and I'm gonna dissect it a little more. And at some point I'm gonna to wanna to go through the public nuisance part, kind of with a fine tooth comb. It is interesting, you know, he's taking up so many parking spots there for a boat, heck, I'll donate one of my spots for a day. Other people wanna donate theirs. But they're trying to charge, part of what they're trying to capture is money for storage at a commercial rate as if it was at a marina. Sounds a little questionable to me. There's a few questionable things that, that I saw in there because it's a lot of supposition and a lot of what if this happens and not a lot of we suffered these damages. And when I've been forced into court over and over, it's always been about what damages have you suffered? I had a neighbor who sued us twice claiming that my termins devalued the value of their property but they couldn't win those lawsuits because they didn't sell their house to prove it. It's, it's just a supposition. So to me, that's kind of what's going on here. Now there is a hearing coming up this Thursday at 9 a.m. Central Time. And I guess it's gonna be a Zoom meeting so that uh, uh, they aren't gonna actually be in a courtroom because I would love to go down to the courtroom and watch that and love to film it, but I don't think they'd let me. But anyways, Thursday morning, 9 a.m., we're going to have the court hearing, and it's a preliminary hearing about these to, to talk about the injunction and to talk about the public nuisance claim. And the interesting thing is, uh, after talking to Paul, he's kind of happy this is coming to a head at this point because, he, you know, he, he wanted to do an interview, and he's ready to sit down this week, but then these things came through. And he wants to wait till after the hearing on Thursday. He wants to bite his tongue. He's told me there's a lot of stuff he wants to say. A lot of people he wants to call out. A lot of things he wants to do. But you know what? Better off just to get to the hearing. He's preparing his case right now. He's got a ton of evidence to present. And, and, and go from there and see how the hearing goes. Now, I don't see anywhere in the words that this is an emergency hearing or emergency anything. And it's kind of odd that Paul got his paperwork. And by the way, he voluntarily went up and grabbed it. They didn't have to chase him down and serve it to him. So it's not like he's not cooperating. So he's cooperating. He went and grabbed the paperwork on Saturday. And he's got three business days to prepare. Three business days to prepare for a hearing. Which is a little unheard of. Just a little bit unheard of. Case number again. And as for the case number again, 27... CV 22-1089. CV is in Charles Victor. 27 CV 22-1089 is a case number. 
anybody out there can look it up. Anybody can find out what's going on with this, and anybody can follow it. And I'm going to keep following it for sure. I'm going to do a little more diving in. Um, there are reports. There are reports. I can't confirm any of this. That Paul may have an attorney finally. Although he's kind of confident. Uh, they can't just move the boat. They've, he's wanted to move the boat. Paul told me he's wanted to move the boat for over a month. He's had a plan that he considers safe to do it. They will not issue a permit. Uh, Hennepin County won't. Uh, he also said he's got the state uh, DOT inspector coming out to look at this trailer. And, and that's really what he wanted to talk about was, you know, is it better just to move it on this trailer as it is right now? Or is it better to try to get it off of this trailer onto another trailer made for it and move it? Problem is, I, I don't know how many trailers are actually made for this specific boat. No matter how, you know, and it's got to be a big boat trailer. I don't know if we've really got anything around that's licensed and ready to go. So all kinds of problems. All kinds of things have cropped up over time, and unfortunately it's come to this now that the county has chosen to go down the litigation path to resolve this instead of trying to find another way. At least that's my opinion, Turbine Guy's opinion. So, one more time, litigation is here. Hearing Thursday morning, 9 o'clock. Turbine Guy is going to hopefully be privy to that, and then uh, we'll see what happens and we'll see what the outcome is, and uh, I'll update you along the way. Turbine Guy, signing off. Wait a minute. We got one more comment. Oh, season storage for something like that? Whew, you're probably talking 10 or 12 grand. I mean, transfer, especially if you got to transport it, you're probably talking even more. So season storage is not a cheap thing. And like I said, I'll say it again, it's a little bit odd that... Uh, that they're trying to get a commercial rate for parking it on a public ramp. A little bit odd to me. Anyways, Turbine Guy will be back tomorrow. Turbine Guy, signing off.